Hey, you're looking for a woodworking truck? It's really getting into bolt turning? Maybe you trying your first bolt, or it's time to upgrade a little chuck that you have? Keep watching. Well, let's get into it. Hey, Ray Ruthen here. Welcome back to the Woodcrafting Place, where we bring you woodworking knowledge each week to help you improve your time in the shop, to make it more efficient, more effective, and more enjoyable. So, you're uh, looking for a woodworking truck, and there's a lot of them on the market, and you're trying to decide which one. I'm going to bring some logic to the decision making to help you and give you the information that you need to make your decision. I'm going to give you three options compare them cover overall build design the quality of the manufacturer differences the ease of operation features that are offered versatility of those features and of course the accessories and the prices first let's look at the basic design and operation of each one of those chucks first i want to mention that all the chucks that i'm going to show you today were bought with my own money none of these chucks are in any way sponsored by the manufacturer so you're going to get my honest opinion no particular order let's start with the utility chuck as you can see here i have a two inch jaws mounted on the, the chuck and i've done that for all three chucks so when we do a comparison in the lathe we can have apples for apples so you can see here how the we call it dummy bars or tommy bars how they fit in And that's how the tightening mechanism works it's a fairly large chuck actually it really it's about four inches in diameter let's get the ruler here yep four inches and of the three chucks this one opens up the widest and you can see how large that opens up and that's by far got the largest range of the three uh, well captured screw worm screw in there for opening and closing so that's the utility chuck and let's move on to the Barracuda 2 so you are unlike the uh, utility chuck this one is operated with T-handle, so it can be operated with a single hand. That's it. There you go. And when you put them side by side, you can see significantly different range. This actually fits pretty much inside there. It's about three quarters of an inch difference. between the opening range of one versus the other. This particular chuck, you can see, has the rack gear in here. Um, wide open, not, nothing in particular keeping it covered or guarded, and this dust does tend to get in there, so it's something you need to keep an eye on to make sure that uh, gear doesn't get jaw jammed up and gummed up. While we're looking at it, you notice right here, we'll talk about the chuck being reversible on the Nova. Well, this one is not reversible. What I did was I modified it and drilled and threaded a set screw so that this could be used for doing reverse. My lathe has reversed, so I want to sand and turn back side of bowls and reverse. Simple modification. The body of the chuck is mild steel, so it's easy to drill and thread. So that is the Barracuda 2. And last is the Nova 2. And this one has, I believe, yep, there you can see it's the smallest range of the three chucks 
Now this one's a little different because this little pinion gear here is captured in the body of the chuck. You can see we turn it here. It's a black ring for protecting the back side and the rack gear. That way uh, it keeps some dirt out. It helps protect foreign matter, keeps it from building up in there. And this being trapped is a nice feature when you're using the T-handle. You can misalign it at an angle if you need to to work around a work piece. There's a work piece right here. It tilts. So, and you always get good contact, no matter, as long as this is in here, that's all it takes, and you're sure you have good contact. As with the Barracuda, because of the shape of the T-handle, if you don't have good contact here, and you're not pushing in like this, putting pressure in this way, this actually will start to back out and you'll start to disengage and like you see it there it's not actually hitting the gear so and it's just a, it's a finicky fiddly thing you have to be sure that you have pressure in here it's a nuance doesn't stop you from getting it tight just something you get used to. The Nova 2 also has the nicest, cleanest working operation. So those are three chucks. So for fit and finish, without a doubt, looking at the three, Nova 2 absolutely has the cleanest, nicest fit and finish. There's very little play. This gear nicely trapped. The black ring, real nice touch for keeping dirt and, and sawdust out. But will it make a difference? That's the question. All right. All right. So now we're going to uh, take a good look on the precision of the three chucks side by side. You can see I've installed an indicator. Each indication, each little mark on the face of the indicator is a thousandth of an inch so we'll, you'll see as this goes up and down as it rides on the metal piece I'm going to use will give us a precision of each chuck so I have this great little ring that's also useful for bowls you can mount it to the bowl if you can't get a good recess this does a great job so we're just going to Mount that on the chuck. All right, so I have the ring mounted on the chuck, and we'll give it a spin. And you can see that spinning really true. We're I think it's slightly less than three mils run out it's actually very precise all right let's move on to the Barracuda 2 okay now we've got the Barracuda 2 mounted in the lathe and we're gonna give it a few spins and it looks like we're about minus two to plus three so that's about a five mils run out total on this particular chuck again pretty precise just like the uh, utility chuck it has a one inch thread so I need to go to a one inch to one a quarter inch adapter to fit to the one and a quarter inch thread of the lathe all right so let's move on to the Nova 2 to see what the run out of that chuck is now you've already seen the Barracuda 2 and you've seen the utility chuck and both of those were three to five in that neighborhood uh, so we'll give this a spin and take a quick look and same precision as the other two chucks it's 
so they're all in very close proximity to each other. All right, let's take a quick look at how these chucks operate and they how they transfer your motion into clamping force for the workpiece. So you can see here in the diagram, all three chucks use a scroll ring, it's called. Now, the difference between all of the chucks is how that mechanical force is transferred from the T-handle into the jaws. Now, I can tell you that with all of these chucks, I've been able to generate more than enough force to crush down on pretty much any tenon that I put on the bottom of a bowl. So they all provide more than enough gripping power to grab onto pretty much any tenon. Knowing that, so what is the main difference? When you're making a bowl, the preferred method for holding on to a bowl is to use a dovetail tenon. You can see the Nova jaws, the dovetail is at the end of the jaw. And you can get a nice healthy dovetail tenon on the bottom of your bowl with the Nova jaw. So you can see here looking at the PSI jaws next to the Nova jaws that the jaw is actually not a true do dovetail. The inside face of the jaw is actually a serrated face. Unlike the Nova jaw and most of the Nova jaws, PSI, most PSI jaws are not dovetail jaws. They only have the number two jaws, a two inch jaw that has a real dovetail on it. And as you can see here, the dovetail jaws that are available for the PSI chuck really have a very modest dovetail uh, machined into them. When you compare that to the large dovetail on the Nova jaw, so really ultimately it comes down to the universe of jaws that are available and the quality of the hold and the options that are available to you or which chuck you decide to go with. If you are looking for the basic budget friendly chuck, lowest cost, which can do the, a good job, give you a nice true bowl for your very first chuck and you have a you're not using a mini lathe and we'll start there is you're using something that has a, a 12 inch or bigger spindle preferably 14 your best bet is utility chuck this for cost basis this will be the least expensive way to get into a wood chuck and again that was the chuck that used the tommy barge and you can see a good view of it so then budget friendly if you're looking for your mini lathe you're going to be looking at your Barracuda 2 or comparable much lighter um, chuck than the others important to recognize that um, it's a comparable to the G3 so less equipment in the chuck so it really is as a lighter profile and again it'll do a nice job holding most bowls especially on a mini lathe or a small midi lathe so if you're looking for the highest quality and budget is not your driving force and you want something that has the biggest universe of spare chucks jaws excuse me, spare jaws for different accessories different size applications so you can do work pieces from small to large pens rubber jaws cold jaws what have you you're talking nova now if you need the smaller if you have a smaller lathe and you want the uh, really high quality chuck for the smaller lathe the g3 which is comparable to the barracuda 2 will be your best bet and like i said if you're using you're looking for your basic entry chuck psi chucks cost wise will cost less okay so last detail i want to just leave you with to remind you is if you're going to buy one of these chucks doesn't matter if it's the psi utility chuck the barracuda or the nova doesn't matter you probably will be best off buying them in a 
kit form or bundle form. Here's the Nova and the Barracuda. And utility truck comes in a nice bundle. If you get on a good sale on Amazon, you can actually get a free set of cold jaws included with it. So cost-wise, it's the best way to do it. The G3 comes in a bundle as well because the jaws are really where most of the money comes in. There's easily for the Nova, there's sets of jaws that run over $100 just for the jaw set. Um, and your basic jaws are on the PSI are somewhere between $20 and $40. So that's the other element to cost-wise, entry level. The PSI you can get in a lot lower cost. You easily will spend hundreds of dollars with the Nova if you buy a lot of jaws. This way, this comes with three sets of jaws, which will cover much of what you need. If you look on the screen now, you can see how three chucks for the categories that we went over today. Overall quality, the operation, ease of operation, the, the accessory variety, and so on. Shape up. Put. The, you can see who's the winner with the green checks, and, and so that'll help give you a, a weight of one versus the other. And if you really, if you're not sure if you really are, should go for the inexpensive utility chuck. I will tell you, it's a, it's a pretty good chuck. It's it's pretty robust. It weighs quite a bit. It's a nice solid chuck, and it will do your job if you can get it past the two-handle Tommy bar operation. Um, it does a good basic job. It will help you. If you're just getting into war turning and you're not sure how much you want to spend, this can you can get into that for a hundred dollars. Something like this, or even the G3, to get several sets of jaws, you're going to be north of two hundred dollars. But if you will use it, you will not regret getting the Nova either G3 for the smaller lathe or the Nova 2 for the bigger lathe. You, you, trust me, you won't regret it. You, you will love it. It, it. The precision, ease operation, it's a great chuck. So, all right. Hope you liked what you saw today. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And we will see you again real soon in the next video. Have yourself a great day.